Greetings Commanders, and welcome to the Friendship Drive Beginner's Guide to Mining. In this video, we'll go over the basics to help you get started mining and making money blowing up rocks in Elite. So let's get started. First of all, let's cover the different types of mining. In Elite, there's laser mining, where you use mining lasers to shoot at a rock and gather fragments that pop off its surface. This was the original type of mining and is still pretty profitable to this day. The positive of this type of mining is that it can be done on any asteroid, though you'd still need to search for rocks containing the mineral you're looking for. Then there's the newer mining system, using other mining modules like abrasion blasters, subsurface displacement missiles, and the most enjoyable of all, the seismic charge launchers. Abrasion blasters allow you to shoot surface deposits off certain asteroids. Subsurface displacement missiles burrow into specific asteroids and dig out fragments from the inside. And finally, seismic charge launchers latch onto fissures on a certain type of asteroid and crack it open, releasing all its goodies. This is called core mining and is definitely the most fun, but the downside is that not all asteroids have the deposits you're looking for and crackable rocks are pretty rare. Now, let's talk modules. When I first went mining, I found this part pretty overwhelming, so I'll do my best to break it down for you. Both types of mining require the same optional modules, so we'll cover those first. You will need a Prospector Limpet controller. This module allows you to shoot a Prospector Limpet, which is kind of like a little drone at an asteroid. The Limpet will then analyze the minerals in the rock and will also tell you if the rock has a core and will highlight any of the surface or subsurface deposits and fissures. All you have to do is activate the Prospector Limpet controller out in front of you and it'll latch onto the rock ahead. Target the Limpet and it'll show you the composition of the asteroid. Next up, you need a refinery. This module takes the fragments and processes them into minerals you can sell. One small tip, if you're mining one or two specific minerals because they pay well, you can take a small refinery rather than wasting a larger slot on one. While it's technically optional, you will go mad if you don't bring at least one collector limpet controller. Depending on your ship size, you may bring two or even three. These allow you to release collector limpets, which will gather fragments and bring them to your cargo hold for processing. This means you don't have to manually scoop all the fragments yourself. Check the module when you install it to see how many limpets you can have active at any one time. Remember, your limpet controllers do not come with limpets. You will need to buy them from the restock menu before departing the station, or you'll find yourself in an asteroid field with no limpets and cursing yourself because you have to go back to a station. You'll want to have a detailed surface scanner on board as well, as this allows you to probe planetary rings to find hot spots. This helps you locate specific minerals and decide where you're going to spend your day mining. Finally, it should go without saying, but you're going to need at least one cargo rack to store your minerals once they've been refined. Next up, the mining tools themselves. For laser mining, you just need mining lasers. Taking two is probably enough. You can get smaller medium lasers depending on your ship's hard points. For the other mining systems, I've mentioned abrasion blasters, subsurface missiles, and seismic charge launchers that you'll need. You can take all three if they'll fit on your ship, but if you're core mining, it's probably more than enough to take one seismic charge launcher and one abrasion blaster. One other module that you'll need for this type of mining, which is not necessary for laser mining, is the Pulse Wave Analyzer. It's a utility module. This module can be pulsed and reveals rocks that have cores as they'll glow brightly and have black squiggly lines visible across the surface, making them easier to identify. Now that we've talked about modules, let's talk ships. You can get started mining pretty early with something like a Cobra Mark III or an Adder, but once you can afford an Asp Explorer and its mining build, you'll be well on your way to a mining career. There are other ships that work well as well, but the Asp Explorer is a great first step, then looking into upgrading into something like a Python later on. With all of that out of the way, you are ready to get started mining. I'm going to cover the basics for both mining types here, so we'll start with laser mining. First of all, you're going to want to locate a mineral to start mining. The best place to do laser mining is anywhere where hot spots of that mineral type overlap. As an example, you might decide to mine painite or platinum, so head over to the miners tool linked in the description below and search for overlaps near your location. Before you undock, remember to stock up on limpets. I like to take around 50-75% to of my cargo holds worth of limpets and you can always eject some if you find yourself filling up. It's also worth noting that if you run out of limpets in the field, you can synthesize them provided that you have the materials required. Once you find your target destination, get yourself over to the system and locate the planetary body listed on the miners tool. Once you're in range, you're going to want to use your detailed surface scanner to probe the ring. This will reveal the hotspot locations, so now you just want to position yourself in the middle of the two hotspots that are overlapping and fly right on in. Upon arrival, 
beware pirates. There will be NPC pirates who will scan you, and if you've already started mining and filling up your hold, they will shoot you, and you will either die or have to leave and start over. So be patient, wait out their scans, and as long as you have nothing but limpets in your hold, they'll fly off and leave you alone. As a side note, if you're mining with friends, make sure you all arrive around the same time. Latecomers will bring pirates with them, and if by that stage you've already started filling up, they will come along and ruin your day. Now, all you need to do is pick a direction and start flying. I like to try and fly directly towards or directly away from the planet as that makes sure I don't accidentally double back and end up finding depleted rocks because I got all turned around, but you can also choose to fly from one hotspot to the other. To get started, you just have to fire your prospector limpet in front of you, then target it as it flies away. It will latch onto a rock and report back to you what the contents of said rock are. If you find the mineral you're looking for, particularly if it's a high percentage, start firing those mining lasers. Now is a great time to give you another little tip. I personally like to have my mining lasers and my collector limpet controllers on the same button. This means that while I fire my mining lasers, I'll keep releasing collector limpets until the maximum number are out, and if any of my limpets expire, they'll immediately be replaced. Make sure to deploy your cargo scoop and your limpets will collect any fragments and deposit them in your cargo hold ready to be refined. If you're looking for a specific mineral, you can also go to your left panel and select any fragments that contain other minerals, then add them to your ignore list. This will prevent your collector limpets from scooping that particular mineral and clogging up your refinery. Especially important if you took a small refinery like I do. Now all you have to do is fly through the ring, checking rocks and shooting any that meet your requirements and continue until your cargo hold is full of juicy minerals. Once you're full, you can refer to the miner's tool for an ideal location to sell and get yourself on over there and sell your haul and make some cash. Congratulations, you've successfully completed your first ever mining trip. If it's core mining that you want to give a go, Miner's Tool doesn't maintain a list of hotspots for specific core minerals. A hotspot of a particular type increases your chances of a core you find being of that type, but does not affect the total number of cores found. For this reason, you'll want to find pristine rings and probe them for hotspots. Miner's Tool does, however, maintain a list of prices and demand, so you can pick a mineral from their list and go off in search of it. You can find nearby systems containing pristine rings by using EDDB, which I've linked below. Now that you've found where you're mining, drop in just like you would for laser mining and be patient while the pirates scan you and discover you're not a worthwhile target. Little do they know, you're about to fill up your hold with goodies. You'll want to fly in a direction and constantly pulse your pulse wave analyzer. For this, I like to have my PWA and my prospector limpet controller on the same fire group so I can quickly analyze a rock when I see it. Make sure to look out to your left and right as well, as there can be core rocks off to one side that you might miss otherwise. A nice way to do this is to fly in the third person camera mode and continue pulsing your PWA to locate potential cores. Four asteroids are the same shape. In icy rings they resemble popcorn, and in metallic rings they look more like, well, kind of like an old stone age arrowhead. But most importantly, they glow much brighter than the other rocks around them, and as you get closer, you'll start to see black lines that only get darker and more concentrated as you approach. Once you're quite close, you'll likely also see the fissures on the asteroid's surface, indicating that you find a juicy target. Shoot off your prospector limpet, which will confirm the contents, and will highlight the fissures so you can shoot them. To start the process of blowing up a rock, you need to target a fissure and shoot a charge at it. Once you do so, in the top right, you'll see a display that says detonation time and detonation yield. The little bar in the middle is the sweet spot. You want to hit the rock with enough explosives so you're sitting pretty in that center sweet spot. Overcook it and you'll get reduced yield, undercook it and the rock won't even explode and you'll feel a little bit silly. Everyone has a different method for this and some asteroids have different compositions of fissures too. I personally try to put a high charge into a low strength fissure first and see where that puts me. To do this, you simply target a low strength fissure and aim at it, hold down your button for your seismic charge launcher until it reaches the third pip and then release. You can then check the top right display and decide whether you think you'll need another high charge and a low fissure or if you'll need to modify your approach slightly. If you overcook it, you can always deactivate a charge from your left panel and try again at another fissure. Keep in mind that you are on a time limit so you'll have to work relatively quickly and carefully. Once you've got the display ticking along in the middle sweet spot we talked about, you can either wait or you can select detonate now from the left panel. Make sure you've backed away from the rock a little, but not too far, as you want to enjoy the fireworks that come with the explosion. Ah, 
That's the stuff. Once that's done, get in there and release your collector limpets to collect the fragments that have been loosened by your deed. You can also use abrasion blasters here to blast off exposed deposits and get some more. Finding core asteroids is tricky at first. Over time you get used to what they look like and identifying them becomes much easier, but because of how random it can be and how volatile the market is, core mining can be a frustrating experience, especially for newer miners. Some days you can make huge payouts from core mining, but others can be quite disappointing and time consuming. For that reason, I recommend laser mining for newer players unless you don't mind flying around looking for core asteroids to blow up. I mean, I completely understand as core mining is way cooler and far more satisfying, but for money making unfortunately laser mining is just simply more reliable. You may notice that I haven't mentioned mapped mining in this guide. I wanted this guide to be geared towards beginners, but it is worth noting that more advanced miners employ mapped mining to maximize their profits. I will not be providing a guide for this, but basically it involves orienting yourself correctly in a hotspot, then roughly following a set path through the asteroids to ensure you're always moving from one profitable rock to the next. I personally don't do this for a bunch of reasons. One, I'm pretty lazy, and when I'm mining I just want to drift around, and I'm not too focused on squeezing the absolute most credits per hour out of my work. I also have an atrocious sense of direction, so orienting myself correctly and making sure I'm in the right spot to start with can be a nightmare. Also, it's worth noting that when Frontier adds any minerals or changes anything about mining, the hotspots can get re-rolled, meaning maps will need to be found again in the future. However, this is an option you can pursue if you're interested. I've purposefully not discussed the top one way to make the most credits per hour, but that's purely because Elite is always evolving, and I hope that people will still find this video in the future and find it useful. Over time, core mining versus laser mining have taken turns being the most profitable, so it's worth checking tools like Miner's Tool, which I've linked below, for prices and demand. If a money-making guide would be useful though, please do let me know and I'd be happy to share my thoughts. I hope this video has been helpful. Again, this guide has been aimed at mostly beginner players, so more advanced players may not have learned anything new, but I hope it was still useful to commanders who are just getting started. Remember, fly safe and keep that friendship drive charging.